Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to make a pie grill using the Pi 3. Yes, so if you go to the learning guide for the Pi Grill 2 and if you go to the software spot, we do have a ready to go image. It's specifically for the Raspberry Pi 2. So if you look here, it says the SD card only works with the Pi 2. If you're building around a B plus instead, see the learning guide for directions on downloading RetroPie and configuring it to work with the Pi 3 display. So if you have downloaded this image and you've tried using it on the Raspberry Pi 2, it, the screen just won't work. The Adafruit Pi TFT just doesn't work. So if you go, if you follow the link here, uh, Phil B's guide is for running OpenGL based games, RetroPie basically, on Adafruit Pi TFT. Pi TFT. So this guide will basically make it work for uh, different types of um, Adafruit Pi TFTs and different types of Raspberry Pis. Um, but unfortunately, uh, I, I found that it doesn't quite work so well uh, with the Raspberry Pi 3. So we're going to use uh, the adding controls portion of the tutorial uh, to, to make the, the, uh, the Pi Girl gamepad work using Adafruit Retro Game. And we're going to use the Adafruit Pi TFT easy install DIY scripts uh, to get our our 2.8 resistive touchscreen to work with the Raspberry Pi 3. So again, this is only for the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, so let's take a look here at some of the hardware you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need the Raspberry Pi 3. A different uh, any type of uh, Adafruit Pi TFT should work. This is uh, the one that's specifically designed for the 3D printed case, which is the 2.8. 320 by 240 Pi TFT. Uh, I'm also going to uh, set up the control. So this is the the Pi Girl gamepad with buttons already soldered on and the header already soldered on. You also need a ribbon cable to connect the gamepad to the display, and of course you're going to need an SD card. I have a 4 gig card, but you can use something bigger. You're going to need a keyboard, and you're going to need an HDMI display for testing. Uh, I'm just using this HD this little guy here which uh, I have it on a tripod, so we'll, we'll have it off to the screen and I'll show it to you when we need to get there. Uh, so that's pretty much the introduction. Um, again, this is just for the Raspberry Pi 3. So let's get started here. The first thing you're gonna need to do is download the Retro the RetroPie ready to go image for your Pi 3. Now, if you go to retropie.org.uk slash download, you can see there's two different download buttons. There's one for the Raspberry Pi 0 and the Raspberry Pi 1. We'll download the the uh, this one here for the Pi 2 and Pi 3. You'll get a, uh, a zip. You have to unzip it, and you'll get left with the Raspberry Pi, the Retro Pi um, image. So we'll need to burn this to our SD card. So I'll grab my SD card and plug it in to my computer. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use SD Formatter to format the card. And this will just make it so that it is nice and clean. The card does have some stuff on it, so I'm going to clear it out here. It won't erase any data, but it'll just format it quickly. And card complete. Okay, we'll hit close. Now, there's different types of ways to burn the SD card. Uh, I like to use Apple Pie Baker. It's nice and easy for me to use. So I'll use that. You select which card you have, which is right here. It's disk 5, 4 gigs, generic storage device, it seems right. In under image file, I'm going to click on the little three dot button and then drop this image into the folder. Hit open. All right, now I can burn the image. So I'll hit restore backup and it'll start baking my pie. All right, so our SD card is finished burning. I have it here. And what I recommend doing first is plugging in HDMI to your HDMI monitor. So that's ready, ready to go. I also have this uh, USB keyboard with the USB dongle already plugged in. So all I have to do now is just plug in the SD card and give it some power. So I'm using a 5 volt uh, power supply. It's uh, connected to my wall. I'm just using a micro USB cable. So I'm going to power it on with this cable. And it might take a minute to boot, uh, especially on initial boot. Um, but so far, so good. It'll boot up into RetroPie. So there it is and it'll prompt me to do the controls, which uh, every uh, default installation of Retro Game will ask you uh, to input your controls. So we'll do that, and we'll give it a quick uh, play run test. All right, so there it goes, booting into Emulation Station. UK, okay, you get a welcome screen, so it's asking me to, uh, to hold down a button. I'm using my keyboard, so I'll just go ahead and run through these real quick. 
And if you want to skip something, uh, just hold down a button. All right, so that's done. I'll hit OK using the A button that we that we uh, selected, and you'll see we have a couple of um, things to play with. So uh, ports. Oops, I have to hit the whatever key I set to the A button. So we can play Doom real quick, just to make sure it's all running okay. All right, so this looks okay. Okay, it seems to be running okay. It's hard to play on this keyboard because it's a little chiclet keyboard. It's all good. I'm just playing. Okay, cool. So to exit, it's a start and pause to exit real quick. All right, so that seems to be working. So all this is okay. Now we're gonna move on to getting the screen to work. So what I'll do is I'll shut it down uh, actually, no. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to plug in. Now, I know the, the Pi 3 has Wi-Fi, but I don't like using Wi-Fi because it's slow. So I'm going to, I'm going to opt in for uh, Cat5 Ethernet, which I have over here. So I'm going to plug that in. We're going to get our IP address, and then um, we'll SSH into the Pi and download the, the software for for the Pi ATFT. So it's, it's blinking green now. That means I think it's good. So to find out your IP, you can use the RetroPie um, tools. So we'll click on that. And if I go to show me my IP, I think it's somewhere down here. Show IP. And I have an IP. It's 10.1.10.19. So I'm gonna switch over to the software stuff and I'll open up my terminal make this a little bit bigger for you. So I'm going to do SSH pi at uh, 10, 1, 10, 2, 1, 9. Uh, it'll give me a, a fingerprint key. I'll hit yes. And then the password is raspberry. And now I am SSH'd in. All right, perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the easy install portion of the Adafruit Pi 2T, the 2.8 touchscreen display for the Raspberry Pi 3. Scroll down into where it says DOI. Uh, install a script and the first thing we need to do is expand the file system so I can do that with uh, sudo raspi I'll expand the file system hit OK and we just need to reboot so I'll go actually down to finish and it'll ask me if I want to reboot and I'll say yes and if I switch over you can see it's rebooting so pretty quick now that the initial boot has happened it should start up pretty quick so now we're going to actually do everything on through SSH so we can just sort of put this to the side for a second and just uh, do everything through the through my uh, desktop SSH my terminal. So let's go back to the software and boot it up just fine and I'll of course have to uh, SSH back into it but yes again Raspberry alright so we're in. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, download the the new kernel I'll install the new kernel so I'm just gonna copy that first line paste it and this should take uh, a little bit depending on your internet that's why I'm using uh, Ethernet so we'll go through this and we'll see how it goes alright now that that's done we can move on to the next one which is to app get the Raspberry Pi bootloader so I'll just copy this whole line here and paste it into terminal this will build some dependency trees Make sure to hit yes or Y to continue, enter. All right, so that is finished. That took a little bit. It will take um, a little bit. Again, that was the Raspberry Pi bootloader. And the next thing I'm gonna do is get the Adafruit uh, install Pi, the Adafruit Pi TFT helper, which will uh, be a lot faster. So I'll just paste it in again, hit enter. Shouldn't take too long. Let's hit yes to continue. All right, cool, so that's done. That didn't take too long. So the next thing we're going to do is the last part to set up this, the uh, the Pi TFT is to use uh, this guy here sudo adafruit dash Pi TFT helper dash t and then this is the type of display that we have so depending on which type of display you have uh, you need to put that in um, we do have a different ones so be sure you type in the right one in this case it is the 28 the 2.8 resistive so hit enter. Now it's going to ask me, would you like the console to appear on the Pi TFT display? Yes. I'll hit Y, enter. 
would you like GPIO 23 to act as an on off button? No, because we're using that as one of the keys on the gamepad, so I'll hit no. And that's pretty much it. Everything should be good now. So what I'll do is I'll do sudo halt minus p, which will turn off the Pi safely. Because at this point, I can now um, hook up the, or just plug in the, the screen, and we should be able to boot up into the screen. So let's take a look at that. Okay, here we go. Here's the Pi. I'm going to disconnect the power since we safely shut off. And I'll just plug in the PyTFT into the GPIO headers. See that there? Just snap it in like that. All right. I still have my Ethernet plugged in so I can SSH into it. And the card's still in there. Make sure the card's still in there. And I'm just going to plug in power again. And we should be able to see this boot up. We'll get a white screen for a second, which is totally normal. But we should be able to boot in in about 30 seconds or so. There we go. Now it looks like I do have to rotate the screen. So I'll show you guys how to do that after it boots up. It's not going to boot up into retro game because we do have to do um, some special stuff. So it'll just stay black for a second. So let's go ahead and jump back over to uh, software stuff so we can set all that up. So again, it's still black. So I'm going to SSH back into it. Put my uh, password in. All right, so what we're going to need to do is uh, do sudo nano on the config file. So just type that in like that. And if we scroll all the way down, the first thing I want to do is actually rotate the screen. So if you look at DT overlay, uh, see where it says rotate equals 90. We actually need to change this to 270 to give it a full uh, rotation. And so we do need to modify some of the things here. So I'm going to revert back over here. Uh, to the guide, we're going to go to PyTFT setup here in the running OpenGL uh, Adafruit for PyTFT displays part of the tutorial. And we're going to scroll down here to where it says speed. This is the DT overlay. We're just going to use the speed and the frame rate. So I'm going to take that speed. So let's delete uh, this speed here and just paste that in. And then for frames, I believe it was 60. Yep, 60 frames. So that's all we need from that. So I'll hit uh, Control X and I'll say, do you want to save the changes? I'll say yes. And then I'll hit Enter to save that to the same spot it was. All right, so now what we need to do is we do need to uh, uh, edit some stuff here. So I'm going to get this command here. So it's sudo nano. We're editing the rc.local file. So I'll paste that in. And if you look here, it says right before the final line exit zero, you need to insert the following. And this will ensure that on boot up that the frame buffer tools will uh, start up. So I'm going to do that. And there's a screenshot here showing you why or where it is. And that'll just, it says right here, we'll need to edit that file to launch the frame buffer tools automatically as the system boots. So that's all good. So I'll hit. Um, Control X again, Y for saving that, and then enter to save that uh, file name. So now that's all good. So the next stuff we're going to do is we're going to do this here. This is going to make the fonts a little bit uh, bigger here. I believe it might be already set up, but we'll do it again. So just copy that line. sudo uh, d package reconfigure console setup, hit enter, and we'll hit UTF-8. We'll do guess optimal character set. And we'll come up here and go to uh, turn minus. Hit OK. And I'll choose this one here, uh, 6 by 12 frame buffer only. Give it a second. OK. So now let's go ahead and then sudo reboot. And I'll switch over to the, to the workbench over here. And we should uh, see the, the, the screen rotate. Well, we, should, we won't see it rotate, but there it goes. So now our, um, our screen is rotated, and hopefully we should see the retro game pie uh, boot screen. All right, so it looks like we still need to do some things. The, the screen is still black, so let's go back over to our software. And we're actually going to go ahead and run through this here. So let's get uh, sudo app update, app get update. So let's run that. First, we'll need to SSH in again, of course, since we rebooted. Put in your password. 
we're in there. So let's go ahead and do sudo app get update. All right, so now that the update is done, we can follow and get uh, the app get install c make git. So let's get that. All right. Looks like we already had it. So let's go ahead and do git clone on the frame buffer tools. Okay, that's all good. We need to uh, go into the directory. We'll make a directory called build. So just follow and copy and paste line for line. We'll go into the build directory. And then we'll make, let's just type it in cmake dot dot. So compile. Okay. Then we'll do make. All right. And then we'll do the install of frame buffer tools. Okay. Since we already did the uh, the edit to RC local, we should be okay. We already ran through this. We actually don't need any of this here. And we've already uh, modified our screen rotation and our speed and frame rate. So let's go ahead and sudo reboot. Let's see if this works. Go over to my my bench here. My overhead. So there we go. Um, RetroPie is booting up. There's emulation station, and there's our our stuff here. So it, if you look carefully, there's a little bit of a black border. So we do need to do something here. We need to turn off overscan. So I'm gonna go back to the software and show you how to do that. So let's just SSH back into it, and I'm gonna do sudo nano boot config. And we're going to have to go here where it says disable overscan, delete that hashtag so that it uh, uncomments that. So uh, now I'll save it. I'll hit yes. I used control X, of course, and then um, enter. So let's do a sudo reboot again. Let's see if uh, our screen was filled up more. All right, so now our screen is a little bit more filled up. You still get these black bars here, but that's normal. All right, so there you go. And of course, this black screen here is just uh, part of the display. But yeah, it's filled up more. So uh, it's, it's looking probably a little bit overblown, but it should be fine. So you can see here, it might not focus, but that's just because my my, uh, my webcam is a little bit dodgy. But that's about it. It's working really well. Um, again, the colors look really nice in person, not here for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, we should be able to play some ports. Up oh, using the right keys, of course. I just get confused. I try using enter, but I actually mapped uh, the A and B buttons to something else. So there you go. There's Doom. Looks really good. So I'll hit uh, what is it? enter. New game. All right. So now I can move around here, and the frame rate looks pretty good. All right. So I think that's good. I'll go ahead and exit this. So we got this portion done. Uh, so we got the screen working. This works really well. So now the last thing to do is to actually get the controls uh, to work with uh, the gamepad. Where did I put it? Over here. So we got to get this to work because this won't work out of the box. So we got to get this to work. So let's go ahead and move on to that. Let's go over here. Back to the software stuff. So in, oh, let's go ahead and SSH in real quick to the Pi. I still have Ethernet plugged in because it's nice and quick. So I'm in there now, and I'm gonna to go to here where it says add controls. So what we need to do is uh, git clone uh, the Adafruit Retro game on GitHub. So actually CD, we're already in the home, so that's all good. Let's paste that in, and we'll go ahead and grab that nice and quick, and we'll go inside of the retro game. All right, so we're inside of the retro game folder, and then we need to do a sudo nano on this file here. So you have to type in sudo nano retro game.c. Make sure you put dot c, hit enter, and now we can see the retro game c folder. So this will have a table. So this is the first table, IO TFT. Skip this. This is for uh, a different project. You want to go to the IO standard 
table. And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because we're actually going to have to do quite a bit of uh, mapping here. So which keys are which? In the PyGirl, uh, in the PyGirl learning guide, under software, scroll down to where it says modify IOTFT table. You see here that this is all basically what we need. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to copy this because these are all the keys, all the all the mapped keys for specifically the the um, the Pi Girl game pad. So we're going to grab that, and I will delete these guys here. So just delete these. Just hold down the the delete button, and I'll delete it to where I get right here. All right, and then I'll paste it in. There we go, and we can leave, we can we can of course use tabs and format it, but I think I think like this would work okay. So again, these are all the keys. So you got left, right, up, down, left control, Z. You got A, B, and it's everything is here, right? So the A, B, X, Y, start, select, and these numbers here are actually the GPIO, not the pin number, but the GPIO number on the pi header, so that's important to know. But that's about all we need to do in the retro game C file. So I'll go ahead and exit that. I'll hit uh, Control X. It'll say, do you want to save it? Of course, I'll hit Y, and I'll hit Enter to write the file name. There we go. Now the next thing we need to do is we're still in the folder, the Adafruit retro game folder, and that's good. So what we need to do is right here, as it says, save. Uh, Close and save the file. So I'm going to hit uh, copy that. Make retro game. It'll make it. Then you do this part here. Save retro game. Or, or move the the retro game to uh, that specific uh, directory. And then before rebooting, I'm actually need to do something else. I'm going to go back over here, and I need to edit this file again. So. This is uh, pseudo nano RC local. So if you go inside of RC local, you'll remember that we had to add this line right before exit zero. This will ensure that the frame buffer tools are enabled uh, on default or on on uh, on boot. So we need to add a new line that also says make sure that the retro game is active. Remember these are for the gamepad buttons. So that's all we need to do there. So let's exit that. I hit Control X, I hit Y for yes, and then hit Enter to save that. And then we need to make a new file here called sudo nano um, udev rules 10 dash um, retro game dot rules. I'll hit Enter. This is a blank file, so we actually need to paste this this uh, this line of code. We'll paste that in. Okay, that looks good. I'll hit uh, Control X, yes, and then enter, and, and now we should be safe to reboot. But what I'm going to do instead of rebooting, I'm going to actually shut it down because I need to plug in the gamepad and I need to take apart the the Pi TFT and the the Pi. So let's do sudo halt minus P. That'll shut. That'll safely shut down the Pi. So let's go over to the Pi. Here we are. So she's shut down safely. I can disconnect power. There we go. I'll disconnect Ethernet for now. And I'll take these apart. Just like that. Now what I'll need to do is I need to plug in uh, some ribbon cables. So if you look at the ribbon cable, there's a white uh, there's a white cable. Make sure that is oriented in this way. There's a little number one there. You probably can't see it, but it's there. There's a little number one. And that should be on the same side of this uh, white cable here on the ribbon cable. So that's how you know that's the right orientation. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. I have a bent thing here, so you should be able to get it in like that. These are kind of hard to remove, so be aware of that. Be very careful with them as well. All right, so now the other end, you see there's a, there's a little uh, notch right there. It's a little lock type thing, keyed. It's a keyed thing. You need to follow that with this here, and um, that's all in the guide 
um, where the right notch is here. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. Just press it in place like that. All right. So now we have our gamepad hooked up to our Pi TFT. So now we're going to connect the uh, the header again to the Raspberry Pi. So it just locks in like that. So now we have our, our little gamepad thing here. So now we should be able to run these here. So I'm going to go ahead and give some power. There's some power. It might take a second or so. All right, it took a little bit because it's looking for Ethernet. So it, uh, it says fail to start, configure. Yeah, it, it's OK. It says the start job is running. It's just because it's looking for uh, the Ethernet. But that's all good. All right, so it's going to boot up now. There's emulation station. And there we go. So if we use the, the keys, you can see that they're working now. But what I suggest doing is, since we mapped it for this keyboard, there might be some keys that are not exactly the same as these guys. So what I, what I suggest doing is hitting uh, Enter, and then going down to where it says uh, Configure Input. I know you can't see that, but just listen to me. Uh, configure Input, Enter, or whichever key is the A button. In my case, it's the key Z. I know it's confusing. But um, you have to really um, know which keys you mapped, because because right now uh, they're not the same. Uh, the keys that are mapped for the keyboard are not the same for the gamepad. So again, uh, go to the menu, the main menu. You can bring it up by using the start key, whichever keyboard key you've mapped to start. Click on, uh, press that, and then scroll down to um, configure input hit the A button, whichever that's mapped to, and it'll say configure input. So let me go ahead and fix our screen so you can see it. All right, so now you can see it says configure the input. So what I'll do now is uh, use the keys, hold down any of the keys. So it'll read it as a keyboard, which is fine. So again, we'll have to follow through this, where it's like, um, you know, what keys you want. So we'll do up down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, and uh, it's saying the L and R keys. I don't have L and R wired into this, um, but if you look at the, at the table over here in the software, you can see what key it is supposed to be. So if we reference our um, our Pi Girl 2, you'll see that we need to make it uh, key A for L shoulder and key S for R shoulder. So let's go back and do that. But since we don't have it here, we're going to use our keyboard because it's they're basically the 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 Pi thinks this is a USB keyboard using the Adafruit Retro Game, of course. So uh, I'm going to select uh, the A key for the L shoulder the S key for our shoulder and then there's some other shoulders like top and left so I'm just gonna hold down spacebar until it says not defined okay so now uh, it's down to OK so now I can use the A button which is over here to hit OK and then I can use the B button to get out of the main menu and then I can do a play test so let's try out um, Doom because everything runs Doom my oven runs Doom <laughs> somebody said before all right, so that's looking really good. Um, I think we're pretty much done with the tutorial. Uh, uploading ROMs and stuff is something y'all can figure out. Um, you can use uh, something like an SFTP client to upload your ROMs and whatnot. And uh, here we are in Doom, playing it uh, all DIY like. This is this is fun. Uh. Now, here's one thing, guys. If I hold down the Y key, you see my screen turns black. If y'all look at the the, the, uh, the tutorial here, uh, you'll go to the Pi TFT display section, and you'll see here that in, or, in order to in order to uh, to turn that off, you actually have to manually cut this trace. So this is on the back of the Pi TFT. 
there's a label that says number 18, that's GPIO 18, and we're using that for the Y button. You can read it right here. Um, the Y button is wired to the GPIO. So just cut that connection because you can see if we don't cut that connection, this is what happens. I'll hit Y key here. It's, it's, it's thinking that it's a button and by default, uh, when we manufacture these, these screens, uh, that is default wired to turn off the screen. So all you have to do is cut that trace. I, I recommend using an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife or something sharp. Be careful, of course, doing that. And just cut it with the, with the knife, <laughs> with the tip. Uh, like I say here, cut trace number 18. So just cut that and you should be good. Obviously, this is a new screen. I haven't cut it yet, so that's why the Y key is uh, is doing that. So I've, that's been one of the things that uh, some folks have to look out for. You know, if I had my L and R buttons wired up, I could strafe, but I can't strafe right now. But this is working. This is fun. Um, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any uh, questions about it, if you get stuck anywhere, uh, go ahead and feel free to drop a comment. Drop a question in the comment section down below. That's about it. I hope this is clear to you guys. Um, what I'm going to do now, though, is I'll probably turn this into a ready-to-go image so that you guys don't have to do this. <laughs> it is a bit of a process, um, but if you have the need, if you have a new Pi or something's not working out, it's always good to, uh, to know how to do it manually. So that's about it. I'm now dead here in Doom. So I'm going to call it out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and be sure to hit uh, subscribe to be subscribed for more stuff. If you liked the video and you found it uh, useful, why not give it a thumbs up? All right, folks, that's it for me. I will see you guys in another tutorial. Bye, everybody.